Yo, what's up? So, today I'm doing a MCP uh, pack tutorial, just how to make a good PvP texture pack. I'll have pretty much all the basics. Um, I won't have anything too insane, like custom inventories, custom animated XB bars, no nothing crazy like that, just textures basically. So, before you really get started, you want to have three things. So. First you want to have 7-zip install, installed, which 7-zip is just a program which lets you extract and change folder types or file types a lot easier. And that'll be useful for later when we're done with our pack. And we're also going to be using a website to generate UUIDs, which is for our pack's manifest, which I will show very shortly. And the next thing we want is um, we want a shortcut to our resource pack folder for our game. And something important to note is I'm playing on 1.16.100, which is not the latest version, but it's the best version. So basically, to get to that, do Windows R, and we want to go to App Data. Windows R on your keyboard. And then I'll open our roaming. And we want to go to our local. And then we want to find packages. And we want to scroll down until we can find Microsoft.Minecraft UWMP. Then we want to go to local state. And from there, we, would want, we want to go to games. Com.mojing. This is an important location. What I would do is once we have this location, we want to create a shortcut and you'd want it on your desktop. But anyways, once we're in here, go to resource packs and this is your pack folder. I have a lot of packs from over the years of playing this game. What we'll do is we'll start off by making a new pack, which is as easy as making a folder. And we'll just call this pack. Alright, I'm going to put a to make sure it's on top by doing that so it's easy to find um so our pack is empty this gets into the first thing we want to do and that's make a manifest so the way we make a manifest is we do right click new text document and we want to call it manifest now this is why 7-zip is very important because we can do what windows normally wouldn't let us do and we can do this. We can make it a .json and rename it. And I'm going to paste in some filler code, which is very basic JSON markup. And these are basically parameter values that we're going to fill in. So the first value that I have is description. We're just going to say ISOM fan 72 and we'll just call this tutorial pack. And this is where we get to the use of UUIDs. So just generate one, copy it to your clipboard by clicking that button, and then we paste it in. And do this again. And this is important. All right, I've got that UUID. This is important, you want two different UUIDs. Now, this is what you can make the color of stuff. So you want this weird looking character. I'm pretty sure you can do Alt to 1 on your keypad if you have that too, to, to actually type it. But what you can do is you can put that in front of characters, and then you can put numbers in front of it to change the color of the text. So for example, if we want to make it green, lime green, dark green, we'd set it to 2. And then if we want to make it like blue, we'd set it to one. You'd only want to do this for your description and name though. That's one of the most complicated things too for making a pack, but it's really easy once you have it. Now, the next thing is a pack icon. This is the thing that like shows when you have your uh, Minecraft opening or you're looking at the packs that you have and like it shows the thumbnail for it. So I'll just copy in a pack icon that I already have. 
it looks like this. So yeah, I went down in Windows and I displayed items larger so you can see it easily. I'm going to be using a lot of textures from Survival Games is Depressing, which is a pack I've made that is really popular. So a pack icon, it's just dimensions 300 by 300. I'm not going to be showing how to make textures because that's different. I'm just showing how to put them together and make them all work in a pack. I'm not going to be showing how to like make them and make like good looking swords and stuff. That's down to artistry skill. But anyways, moving on. Is I've got two more JSON files that I'm going to show. And I'm going to copy and paste them both in for the sake of time. One is splashes.json and the other is loadingmessages.json and I'll explain what both of them do and I'll show you the code. So it's very basic markup code and this is from my PVP textures pack that I copied it from. And basically a loading message is just like when you open a world and it's loading on the screen, loading the world it'll show these messages and you can kind of see how I broke each line to say the next message. It just randomly goes in between. And splashes is, as you can see I did color coding and then I did a break line to like go to the next line which is something you might know if you program. But um, yeah this is what shows on the main title screen for Minecraft next to the logo. Also by the way something important to say is loading messages and splashes are completely optional. These are just for flair, you know, but pack icon and manifest are required. But now into our next folder, which we can just easily make. This one is going to be called textures and you can probably guess what's in it. And inside of it is going to be all of our textures. Like I said, I'm not going to be showing how to make good looking textures. I'm just going to show how to put your textures all together in one pack and make it work. So. There are several, there's a lot of files inside of this. And the first two folders I'm going to show are the block textures, which I'm just going to copy them in from a pack I have open on my second monitor. And the block textures is, well, it's all the blocks. Now there is like, there is MC Meta, which MC Meta is a file type a Minecraft developers made for Bedrock Edition, which basically controls if something is an animated texture on a sprite sheet as you can see it would, it would it's like basically kind of like a json file it's like oh we have a frame rate and we're gonna go to the next file like you know i'm not gonna really show how to do that you can kind of just look at the code and see how it works customize it if you want this is just all the images if you want to like modify how they look which i'm sure you're gonna want to I recommend going into other into other texture packs and getting the textures you want and replacing them with ones you don't want until you have a pack that you like. And if you want to edit a pack, I recommend having Photoshop is best, but that costs money and if you don't want to pirate it, um, you can get what's it called? Uh, Paint 3D I think and Microsoft Paint are great free options, but yeah, this is what the blocks look like. This is pretty much every block texture in the game too, by the way. Now, the next folder in the textures is items, which I will copy in from another pack. And this isn't every item in the game, but this is a good amount of them. And like I said, you can just replace the textures that you like, or that you don't like with ones that you do like. I already have them all named. You simply just take your edited file and drag it in and replace it. And for example, I've got like, there are different like bow states. Like, you can kind of see how that works. You can just play around and modify textures how you like. Alright, the next thing I'm going to show is armor. So it's actually in, it's in a, oops, I did not mean to copy that twice. Um, it's in a folder called model models and inside of that is called armor and inside of that is all the armor textures and each armor texture has two layers except for leather leather has like a weird overlay but don't worry about that so yeah you just modify the this is the sprite sheet for it just modify how you want it microsoft or not microsoft minecraft automatically does the geometry for you and wraps it on the player's skin correctly for you 
So yeah, just color over, put in the textures that you want. And the next thing I'm going to show you is particles, which is back in textures. I've pasted it in from another pack. Now ignore like all of this. The the folder that will or the file that we're focusing on is particles.png, which this is a this is a sprite sheet for all of the particles in the game, like crit particles, um, particles from like trading and like potions. So explosions, I think that is. I'm not sure. And it's, uh, also, by the way, I'll be putting this pack download for you guys to play around with in the description. The next folder in the textures um, folder is the environment textures. Now the environment textures are the destroy stages. Now the destroy stages are like when you're breaking on like a block uh, and like it shows like the damage on it until it breaks. That's basically what it is. And then we also have the moon phases like in the sky, the sun phase, All right, well this is just a single sun. And then we also have the rain texture. I wouldn't worry too much about these three though, they aren't that important. And the overworld cube map is basically the sky box. It's a little bit different than Java. It's not one sprite sheet, it's separate images that are combined into a panorama shot. And don't get this confused with the title screen. That's called panorama, this is called cube map in its own different location. Now I'm going to be showing the UI folder. There are multiple UI folders, but I'll be showing the one that's inside of textures. Inside of this is all of the effects. So like, if you drink like a potion, um, then like in the corner, this is like what it will be shown. And we have experience bars. I'm pretty sure this is just for the loading screen. This isn't actually the one on your hotbar. It's just animation JSON defining how it will look in the game and now this is the panorama that will be on the main start screen background now the next folder I'll be showing is kind of complicated but it is the GUI folder which contains a lot of info in it so inside of this ignore this sprite sheet this is useless um, is some of the most important textures that people care about is the GUI uh, which this shows the hotbar, GUI, I don't know, people say either one. So this shows like the beacon effects, the um, mobile controls, and then the hotbar. And icons is also very important. This shows background of the hotbar, all of the hearts and hunger bars, and also the crosshair. So you can just edit over this and put in your preference. And next is, now this is like beyond me when it comes to texture pack making. This is like GUI stuff, GUI, like I'm, I don't specialize in this kind of stuff at all. I have a friend who does, but this is basically just what it would look like to have an invisible inventory set up. It's really complicated and I just use the same invisible inventory for all of my packs. But, yeah. And the achievements, I don't know why it's called achievements, but this is actually for the real hotbar. This is it empty, this is it full. And I'm pretty sure these two tiny bits are like for when it's inching along, but not all the way full on a slot. Now, uh, this is the second to last part of the tutorial, where I'm just going to be showing like all the random stuff that you might care about, but isn't actually really that needed. So, for example, we have, go back to textures, we have like painting, which is just a folder called painting, and I don't know why it's called KZ, but it is. It's like all the paintings. And I'm not sure how it works exactly. I'm pretty sure it's like you, you just put over your own custom textures that you want that fit the same size of these already made paintings. And there's another folder that's kind of weird, but it has some useful stuff in it. And it's called MISC, which is like short for miscellaneous, or however you say that. But inside of it is some useless stuff, but some useful stuff. Like, for example, the enchanted glint on like a weapon. 
Um, another useful thing is the flame atlas texture, which just goes in textures and on its own. And this is basically what it looks like when your player is on fire from, or when any, when any entity is on fire. Um, this is basically the animated texture. This next one is kind of useless, but I mean, hey, if you want it, you can have the map textures. It's only two, the background and the icons. Now, this next one is a bit crazy, but it's the entity folder, which this one's huge. This is a huge folder. And this contains like every single mob texture on in the game, like villager textures in the sprite sheet for the geometry, like <laughs> ender dragon. Yeah. And it also has stuff like signs, which are technically block entities. Next thing I'm going to show you is a color map which color maps are actually extremely useful. I don't use them that much though. They're kind of more for like holiday maps or texture packs. So like this is a bright one, like like this is what like a bright color map would look like. But there's also one for example that's like all white for like a snow Christmas themed um color map. And if we actually go back to the main screen, um there's a surprising amount of other extra folders you can put in. Like for example, you can put in another folder called Entity, which is what the arrow looks like when you shoot it, like the 3D arrow. And then the Steve skin, which I'm pretty sure modifies what the default Steve looks like. And another useful one that you might want is Font. You can modify what the font looks like. I recommend going around to different texture packs and seeing what fonts you can find that you like, and then naming it default date. The next thing, I don't, I'm not really good at this part, but there's a sounds folder. And I unfortunately don't have all of the game sounds. I only have, I only have so many. Like I only have them for damage. I only have them for like, I don't even have that one. I removed it, removed that one. I only have like custom sounds for like, um, certain things in the game but yeah anyways this is like i don't have every sound so i recommend you look up bedrock sound packs on like mc pedal and youtube you can probably find a lot out there and they're gonna have like every sound in the game which you can then customize but every single sound is gonna be a dot ogg file which is the type of audio file that most games use so i would probably try to figure out how to make OGG files using like Audacity. Alright, so now we're on to the last part of the tutorial where we have our pack finished and now we want to turn it into an MC pack which auto imports on double clicking it and launching it on any OS that supports Bedrock Edition. So first we want to send it to a compressed to zip folder. This is where 7-zip comes in handy. And then we want to get rid of the zip extension on the file and call it an MC pack and rename it. And let's see if we launch it. So now our pack is importing once we've ran Minecraft and it is successfully imported. So I'm just going to deactivate my other packs I have. Activate tutorial pack. This is like a really weird pack. This was just to demonstrate what I have. It's gonna look like a mix of survival games is depressing and um, the other um, pack that I used to use a lot, my OG pack. But yeah, got the see-through inventory. Got our blocks and everything that we've imported in. Um, Got our, got our stuff working in the corner with our effects. Got our particles. Yep, so that's how you make a PvP texture pack. So, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments 
if like I messed up on anything or if there's anything else I could have added. I know I probably could have added like how to make like a custom Minecraft logo, like on the start screen. But yeah, I spent a lot of time planning and editing this video. I've been wanting to make this video for a while too, I just kind of procrastinated on it a bit. But yeah, see you in the next one.